is going to be a breakdown of the Tour de France route for 2020. I'm not going to break down in too much detail the actual uh, the actual route per se. You can see the the other like cycling news, the Tour de France route. We'll go through it briefly in detail, but the the three things that stood out to me as I cut back to it are. Uh, it's basically in this a lot in the south and middle of France. You'll see not not on the coastline on the coastline on the south of France, but mostly in the middle of France, and not nothing in the north. So, will there be any cobbled sections, any sections like that? I don't think so. There may be some gravel, but uh, that might be a sort of a mountaintop gravel finish rather than a um, a flatter cobbled gravel stage like you see in like Paris Tour, which has gravel. Anyway. <sighs> Three things that stood out to me, or a few things that stood out to me. How hard the first week is, is probably number one. It's a welter-like hard first week. Let me just see. Audio is pretty good. People saying the audio is good. Comment, can you see the Can you see the, uh, the background all right? Looks like you can. I'm trying to, uh, I'm improving my software gains. Um, anyway, th this video is going to be up in full afterwards. I'm going to leave it up, but... So how hard the first week is, we've got, in the first six stages, this is very unusual for the Tour de France, in the first six stages, we have, let's go to, let's go to the routes, or the, see if it will show me the, uh, the actual stages, we have, okay, so stage one, obviously flat stage from Nice, Caleb Ewan, Caleb Ewan versus Groenewegen, if great, if Jumbo Visma bring Groenewegen, that's going to be this stage, and then, Second stage. Remember in the world to have the second stage. Did Quintana win the second or third stage? This is that mountain stage. Second stage in the Tour de France. It's pretty unusual. You, you know, two passes over fifteen hundred meters. Not high gradient, but that just gives an indication because Nice is at sea level. There's some serious climbing in that second stage. Stage three is a flat stage, but there could be. I don't know. You know, the, some of these flat stages aren't genuine sprint stages. If there's wind or a few rollers. Stage four is hilly. This is probably, I've seen a climb to 1,800 metres. Again, this is going to be a Gilbert-type stage. Caleb Ewan and Groenewegen not winning that either. And then stage five, they finally get a nice bunch sprint flat stage, but it's a false flat, a sort of uphill false flat. So maybe Sam Bennett, comment down below. You reckon Sam Bennett's winning, winning stage five? So where am I going? Back here. This is this is probably the most shocking stage so far. The, the most shocking stage is stage six, Mont Agoul. I believe it's the first time they've gone up this climb, and it it fin it's a really pretty hard climb. I reckon it'll be some sort of goat track. I reckon there could be gravel maybe, and then they've got fifteen kilometers at the end uh, that's after the climb. So that's just I'm not going to show you the, the, all the rest of the stages, but that stage or the first six stages which is what stood out to me is just being so hard and i think let's talk about the reasons for this the reasons for it being so hard is because in the first week i know we i know we sort of like the sprinters and you know people think oh the tour de france the sprinter should get to run the first week but the reality is how can you market a race or market an event where there's not any action for like 95% of that time? No. So like how can, for example, let's just do the maths of it. In a sprint stage, comment, comment, honestly comment the guys in the US and the Australian guys, comment, would you watch and sit up and watch a full sprint stage three nights in a row 220 kilometer flat sprint stage zero chance I, I just i just watched the highlights like why would you watch <laughs> i know i know they're roll, you know they're riding but why would you just watch them rolling around i don't even know how the commentators do it properly so like right there it's a three-week race plus two rest days three-week race the first week no one's going to watch except the highlights packages highlights packages on youtube so <laughs> and then highlights package on a sprint stage which they still don't you know eurosport still managed to not do them correctly but if you just show the last three kilometers in full you've seen the whole stage you no know, gc action how can you market that to sponsors as a broadcaster so that's why maybe you have a tt somewhere in there or these rolly stages but that's why they've done it okay and you can't really 
it's hard to criticize them for doing that really i mean in my, in my opinion but let's let's go let's skip forward and i'll, I'll bring it back here let's skip forward comment if you actually like this I, I installed this software last night comment if you like this being able to see the screen rather than just my massive forehead so this is not no, not staged not <laughs> before champs Elysees, this is crazy comment comment if you like this setup la planche de Bellefield. so this is what chris Froome was uh, a bit salty about on twitter although he shouldn't really be salty at all so remember everyone has everyone seen this chris Froome looking for the tt kilometers gif he already won the internet chris Froome undercover actually pretty funny guy i think he'd actually be once he's retired and doesn't have to sort of spout the the corporate line i think he'll be pretty funny even though like i don't really like him too much but anyway individual time trial let's get it up away from my forehead up to la planche de Belfive. so 28 kilometers is flat to rolling uphill and then it's a six kilometer climb or, but yeah six kilometer climb and i think there's about four kilometers at eight and a half percent so who does that suit um well primos roglic for starters <laughs> Primoz Roglic is who I think that would suit, being a guy who can put power down on the flat <clears throat> and, and uphill. Tom Dumoulin as well. Remember, Tom Dumoulin set almost Pantani-like records in uphill TTs up to in the Giro Santuario di Europa. He set sort of his 30 seconds off Pantani as a bigger guy. Dumoulin should do well there. Thomas roast me if you think I'm wrong I think Grant Thomas is already in the decline and I don't think any of us are going to bring Thomas to the Tour de France but anyway this I kind of do like it depends it really it's hard to criticize the Tour de France or, or you know I like I like this idea I do like the individual time trial in the last stage the problem is if like if a Chris Froome or an Egan Bernal or a Pr Primoz Roglic because of events outside ASO, ASO's control um prior in the race are uh, like three minutes ahead so like remember Vin Vin Vincenzo Nibali won in 2014 he won by seven minutes if he's seven minutes ahead he can literally like not have to do the time trial <laughs> so and then it becomes completely boring so um that's but whereas if everyone's like within five seconds of each other and it's super close you know if you've got Roglic, Froome, Bernal, Pino if he makes it this far uh, this super close to each other then this will be like the most exciting stage or time trial stage in the last 10 years so it's whether it's a success or not it's kind of out, out of the ASO's hands bike change territory <laughs> sorry I need to bring up I'm just I'm just changing between that to read the comments let me bring up a separate screen there we go um, bike change territory guys if you want to see sort of a, a fuller breakdown of each stage by stage go check out Mihai Kazaku on, on Twitter um, he thinks stage 18 is going to be pretty crazy there's a lot of mountain top finishes in this Tour de France and then also check out La Flamme Rouge on Twitter he's got all this stage profiles all the climbs like that um, then let me just drag that out of there gotcha So will there be a bike change? Will there be a bike change on this stage? I reckon someone will, for sure. Remember this comment if you remember Roman Bardet's bike change <laughs> when they <laughs> AG two R, what's the opposite of marginal gains? Um, diminishing returns. <laughs> AG two R should be named the team of diminishing returns because yeah, when he changed his T G bike to a climber's bike. The speed they're going, I don't think they should do a bike change, honestly. I think it'll make you've still got you got 28 kilometers here as you're looking at the profile 28 kilometers where the aero the tt bike is going to be clearly advantageous and then what is it eight and a half percent so an aero road aero only starts to matter stops mattering at seven percent so there's like one percent difference they should just stay on the tt bike and not fuck around because you can lose the tour de france if you stuff around anyway so after this was released after the so many mountain top finishes, really hard first week, no long individual time trial, which Chris Froome was kind of complaining about, but this individual time trial I think suits him. What else? Sprinter's going to have a really bad day. Arge Jumbo is going to bring Dylan Groenewegen, all those questions. But let's look at how the betting market has actually reacted to to this, this news. So 
I mean, th these odds are really depressed because it's so far out, so you're not going to actually get good odds, so you should never actually put money on now, but let's look, Egg and Banal into $3.50, Chris Froome $4.50, um, Tom Dumoulin six fifty, Grant Thomas nine dollars. So basically, the bookmaker here is getting free money for Grant Thomas because I don't even think. Again, happy to be roasted, but I don't even think Ineos is going to bring bring Grant Thomas. I think Ineos team is going to be Chris Froome, Egan Bernal, Dylan Van Baal. Who else? <laughs> Let's go and have a look at them. Who else are they going to bring? Jonathan Castroviejo, obviously. Kenny Alessand is gone. No, Mikhail Kwiatkowski, Jonathan Narvaez, maybe. Puccio, Rowe, and Ivan Sosa. I think they're going to bring a really... People, I'm not, you know, this is not uh, the newest news ever, but well, I'm, I'm not a genius for saying this, but teams are going to bring probably one road captain and very, very climbing focused team because of all the mountain stages. And uh, yeah, I think Ineos are going to bring a really climbing heavy team. Like like you see at the Tour of Colombia, the, the team they bring there, why wouldn't you bring Sosa, Bernal, all the light guys across to the Tour de France? It's not a year that looks like it's going to suit a Pavel Sivakov uh, type rider. So that's who I think we're going to see from Ineos. Who do you think? Jumbo Visma are a, tough, a more tough one. Um, or oh, Richard Carapaz too, maybe up. But then you know you, you don't want to have if you send Froome, Carapaz, and Egg and Banal to the Tour de France, then I don't know. Then <laughs> then you kind of get the situation where they have the completely shit house welter again this year, and okay, Giro. Whereas, but again, the focus of the Ineos organization and Sky is to win the Tour de France. They don't really care about. Um, they don't really care about the other other races. That's just the reality of it. Um, so yeah, climbing specialists for Ineos. Not sure about Carapaz. Don't think Grant Thomas is going. I think he'll go to the Giro d'Italia because. Um, but then will he be in shape enough before then? But and Giro looks hard. Giro has the Queen stage of the Giro just got released on the Flamme Rouge. If you want to, I know this is Tour de France preview, but this is why I think. Here we go. So this is apparently. The Giro mountaintop, the Giro Queen stage, Egg and Banal, <laughs> Egg and Banal territory. So, will Grant Thomas be able to go to the Tour de France? I really don't know, and no one knows except Ineos. But the betting markets, and there's usually inside information fed into these, says that Banal is going to be the favourite, says he's going to be the team leader. I think Banal will be the team leader. I think Banal's the favourite. I think Thibaut Pino, I said this on Reddit, on the subreddit. I think Thibaut Pino has never... Thibaut Pino has never won a major stage race. Let that sink in. Thibaut Pino, nearly 30, has never won a state major stage race. And I don't mean Grand Tour. I mean Terreno Adriatico, Volta, Catalunya, Romandie. Any, anything like that, never won one. He hasn't finished the Tour de France since 2015. So... If he wants to win the Tour de France or get on the podium of the Tour de France, Thibaut Pino, especially given how hard this race is, given we've got a mountaintop finish individual time trial on stage 20, Thibaut Pino needs to leave FDJ. He needs to leave the French teams. That don't, I, I, mean, I don't believe in the whole marginal gains like cover story you know, completely, but I do believe that Ineos are ahead of the other teams, or many of the other teams, not Jumbo Visma and teams like that, but ahead of the AG2R and FDJ, I think they're ahead of them in their, I don't know, their training methods, <laughs> Roman Bardet bike change, example number one, Pino needs to leave the MPCC FDJ, and like, I know what they're trying to do with having, you know, <laughs> trying to kick corticosteroids out of cycling, but it's not an even playing field. Like he's unnecessarily disadvantage disadvantaging himself as compared to the Ineos guys. And if he'd been able to take a corticosteroid shot in his right thigh last year, he gets on the podium on the Tour de France. At the minimum, probably wins it. So Thibaut Pino, nope, not betting on him at all. I think it's banal. I think it really suits Roglic, but obviously you got Tom Dumoulin coming. It's it's crazy. It, who knows where Ineos will send, um, where Jumbo Visma will send people. As you can see, you know, will these sort of these harder 
these harder um, hilly finishes in the first weeks, they look perfectly designed for this man. Top five worst hair in the pro peloton, Wout Van Aert. So will will Jumbo Visma just have Wout Van Aert as their sprinter and say, Dylan Groenewegen, this is way too hard for you. You're not even going to make it to the Champs-Élysées. Who will they bring? I think it'll be two prong. If, if, if Jumbo Visma really, just really want to win the Tour de France, this needs to be their team. Sepp Kuss, Tony Martin, Robert Haysink, Stefan Kreuzweig, Primoz Roglic. You ready? You ready? Tom Dumoulin. Fuck it. Just bring everyone. Just bring fucking everyone and just say we're going <laughs> to we're gonna try and win this race. Just the Tour de France. And George Bennett and maybe Lawrence de Plus too. So they got a super strong team. Maybe Haysink or Van Emden. <clears throat> Van Emden will be the, one of those two guys will come uh, instead of both of them. But that, that's what I think they need to do because the the problem with the problem with the uh, the way this tour is set up. Let's go back a, a couple of stages. Let's go to say stage eighteen. The, one of the I, I said I mentioned three things that stood out to me. Well, this is maybe the second thing. All these mountain top finishes, all these mountain stage races, they all are under two hundred kilometers. They're all in the one fifty to one eighty k range, and what does that mean? Why people think, oh, that's a problem? Well, firstly, you know, people like Mihai Kazuku, I don't really agree with this, but they, they say it anyway. I don't think it necessarily makes for more exciting racing, having them really, really long. But he's saying, basically, if you go to like this, if you go to this stage, which is probably like over 200 kilometers in the Giro, the Queen stage, this stage is so long and so hard that it's impossible for a mountain train, even Ineos mountain train, to control the entire race so that chaos will inevitably ensue. Sorry, this is, I think, maybe only 170 kilometres. So if you have these sort of monster mountain stages rather than these shorter, you know, shorter, I wouldn't like to ride it, but, you know, under 200 kilometre mountain stages, well, the problem with... So if, if the stage is only... 170 k's that means it's a four and a half hour stage to four hour 45 minute stage maybe a bit longer give or take half an hour the point is it's not a six hour stage it's not a seven hour stage so it allows Ineos to be to more easily control the entire race whereas if it's a longer stage Dylan Van Baal or the domestics will drop, you know, more likely to drop off. So I think the route, I know I put out on Instagram, I put out on Instagram if you want to check it out, uh, a post saying, oh, this is the ASO conspiring to basically make sure that Thibaut Pino and, and Julian Arfleet win the Tour de France. But I think this kind of, this route really suits Ineos. They've got the mountain train. The stages aren't too long. They've got the individual time trial at the end, which is half flat, half uphill, which, which suits Bernal, and I think really suits Chris Froome if he actually comes back as Chris Froome. Um, you've got all these mountain mountain top finishes. they got better strategy than some of the French teams, so I think it really does suit, suit, um, suit Ineos. People are saying it suits Pino. Why... Okay, so so it means that FDJ will be able to bring Rudy Mollard and um, and David Godot and have like a strong climbing team and that and FDJ and and AG Tuar because there's no team time trial they won't get punished for being shit house in the team time trial particularly AG Tuar are bad um, so <laughs> I know it suits it suits Tivo Pino in that he's a climber and there's lots of climbing but thinking about the how the race is going to pan out I honestly don't I still don't see it for Pino um David David Goodo will win it I think you know this this harder route with a harder first week does not bode well for Pino because he will be more tired in the third week and as I said he can't take corticosteroid TUEs he will he will yeah, so I think this route will require really solid planning from the teams in how they're going to approach certain stages. Maybe, and this this may well happen, maybe in the first week, the sort of best thing from a game theory perspective, and we sort of saw Enios do in 2019, is do nothing. 
do nothing in the first week, just try and stay out of trouble, not crash, not lose time, not lose too much time, don't get in the jersey too early and let other people burn themselves out. Maybe in the first week, Pino is like attacking, 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 gets in the yellow jersey, France goes off, um, <laughs> and then he cracks in the third week. I could see something like that happening. Maybe, I mean, I like Pino as a person. I respect him. Um, but, yeah, I think I think it's still not going to happen for him. No, sorry, sorry, French fans. Um, maybe he'll have a better team with, with David Godot and... Uh, and Rudy Mola and those guys being more experienced in helping him. So comments, I need some comments. What else do you want to hear? What other questions do you have about about this route? Here we go. David, I'm just reading through the comments now. Put the longest ones in front of a mountain block. Variation in mountain stages is the best. Ian Lawrence, quick step. Do you think they'll build around a team around Julian Alaphilippe to go for the overall? Okay, let's go to quick step. Quick step. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick step cycling. <laughs> do you see? Did it, did everyone see the tweet from uh, to Kearney Quick Step or their Instagram post when they said there's a individual time trial from Nice to to Paris? That must have been a thing lost in translation. So here we go. Will they? I think the big question number one is: Will they ride for Julien Alaphilippe? Do they have the the train to support Julien Alaphilippe? Um, David Fernandez says this will be the last tour to win for the rest of the cyclists from 2021 onwards. Ev- Nepal will win the next tours. Well, I've got him on the screen right now. It's your boy, it's your boy Remco. So who will they bring? Gilbert probably for that first. Oh no, Gilbert's gone. Fuck, he's gone to Trek Segafredo, hasn't he? Bob Jungels, Henrik Maas. Obviously, obviously straight up. They can't have Enric Mars riding as their GC guy. I'll say it right now. De Kernick Quick Step should go, go knock on Enric Mars' door, go to his house, contact him in any way possible. Say, Enric, we want you to really focus on how you're going to be the best domestique you can be for Julian Alaphilippe in July next year, because that's what you're going to be doing. Because Julian's French, Julian's better than you, and you're going to be riding as his domestique. <laughs> Is what I would say to them. As well, I'd say to Elric Mass. I don't know. That, I don't. James Knox is there as well. Okay, th- this is this is a team that, if they want to just support Alaphilippe and not go really go for stage wins, oh, must gone the Mother Star. Fuck. <laughs> wow, this hot, quick step have kind of got a high turnover. Viviani's gone. We'll ignore that Elric Mass conversation. Who else can they have that conversation with? No, they shouldn't have it with Remco. So this is what this is what their team should be. Hopefully, the riders are still there. Caspar Askren is sort of the flat time trial, uh, you know, the time trialist controlling it on the flat for them. Remy Cavagna, strong rider, rode really strong in the Vuelta, won a stage, obviously. Uh, Alvaro Hodge as their sprinter, maybe Bob Jungles. Um, Remco should go the tour. Remco has to go to the tour, and not just because I want to see Remco there, but how can you not send Remco when he's probably going to be, he'd probably be your best mountain support rider for Julian Alphilippe. Like, honestly, correct me if you guys think I'm wrong, but I think that Remco is probably looking at their roster right now. I don't know off the top of my head who's coming back in, who's coming into the team, but is Remco the best climber, pure climber at quick step? After Julian Alaphilippe, I mean, I know he'll probably go to the Olympics, but this doesn't look good for 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 Alaphilippe in terms of sort of mountain domestique support. And that being said, we all we all watched the twenty nine Tour de France, didn't we? Um, <laughs> did Alaphilippe have a lot of mountain support in the twenty nine Tour de France? Fuck no. So, oh yeah, Alex Perez. Oh no, sorry, Gabith Warrior. Um, James Knox too. So their best domestiques for Alaphilippe will be Remco and James Knox, and they have to send those guys. James Knox, obviously done, you know, super strong in the Vuelta. He he would have come top ten in Vuelta were it not for that crash at the end. Um, he did well into a year. So I don't know. Alaphilippe not uh, not got great support, but he probably doesn't. Oh, he didn't need in the twenty nine Tour de France, but that was a different Tour de France. You still would be better to have support than not have it at all. So, okay, let's have a look. 
through the comments what team will Rohan and Dennis ride for? No idea. What role will he play in the Tour de France given the lack of TTKs? Zero role. He won't ride the Tour de France because there's no stage for him to win. Even if Remco rides the GT, it will be the Giro. Why will, why will Remco ride the Giro rather than the Tour? Is that so that he can ride the Giro and then prepare for Tokyo Olympics? Probably, maybe. I don't know. Tour de France is... Julien Alphalie, remember, for De Koenig quick step, Julien Alphalie winning the Tour de France is more important um, than Remco Avenepol, uh winning gold at the uh, the, the Olympics. Sorry, uh, UAE has to send Pogaccia. Yeah, this looks <laughs> this looks really good for UAE um, supporting. Uh, UAE sending Pogaccia, and this looks like... Does anyone think Pogaccia can get on the podium? Let's look at the betting markets. So he's 13 to 1, so... You know, this currently has him 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th... 7th out of these guys, but I don't think a few of Dumoulin or... Garant Thomas and Roglic, maybe not all of them will actually go to the Tour, so... Um, yeah, I think Pogaccia podium chance for sure... Right, Movistar plans. What are the Movistar plans to just have a really shit tour and win the team classification? Given Sam Bennett, what Sam Bennett did in, let's see, I think there's another uh, Col de la Laws. This is a hard stage with, you know, several climbs at 20%. Um, I, there's no stage profile that's been released for this, so I'm just, I'm jumping, jumping between things, but... Um, Mikel Lander, what about Mikel Lander? <laughs> nothing about Mikel Lander, ain't nothing happening for him. Ain't nothing happened for Movistar. I mean, the big threat to everyone is obviously um, Naira Quintana. Naira Quintana's going to win, is he going to win the Tour de France? Goes to Arkea Samzic. <laughs> I mean, he actually has all right team support there, if you want to look at his team. Should you want me to comment if you want, want me to actually bring their team up? <laughs> and have a look at his support, but he actually has all right team support. Um, neither man. But anyway, apparently Julien Alphilippe got smashed on the Col de la Laws. And correct me if I'm wrong, I've said that a few times, but did this year's Tour de France have really steep climbs, like in mountaintop finishes and mountain stages, and like really irregular climbs? I don't feel like it did, and maybe that's what helped Julien Alphilippe sort of stay in touch with everyone. So this is... We're now going backwards. I might go... Here we go. So this is... Let's just look at... So we've got stage 15. Stage 15 and then rest day. And we've already had a hard two weeks. So this is the second rest day in, in his air. And then we got La Tour de Pain, Villard de Long. Um, 164 kilometers, stage 16, mountaintop finish. And it's in La Chartreuse area. And what have we got? Monte de Saint-Nizier de Mont Montcherot climb. So we got hard, hard climb out the gate. Then looks like a category two, the Côte de Revel, and then a hard finish. But nothing at altitude. So maybe, maybe I'm talking shite. When I, maybe Benal shouldn't be favourite. But then, how do you know the condition Chris Froome is in? Because is Benal, you know, a one-trick pony in, at altitude? I personally don't think so. I personally think he's straight up beast. But you know. Okay, so stage 16, stage 17, Grenoble to Mirabel called the Lolos. No stage profile, but they're going up, sorry, excuse me, voice crack, going through puberty. They're going up Col de la Madeleine on, a, I think, a different way up, up, and they've got seven, you know, irregular kilometres. So Alaphilippe in trouble there. Pino probably will be fine there. And this is Mirabel to La roche sur Again, no, like... Super. Oh. The early climb to Colne de Rosaland is hard, the hardest climb of the day, but then there could be some steeper climbs at the back. So the climb de Monte du Plateau de uh, Glière looks quite steep. So if they really want to destroy Alaphilippe and put, you know, big, big time into him, this is the problem with having no teammates. Having no teammates is the difference between coming sort of second. Or 15th, because you see here, let me scroll up, let me scroll up for you, I was had that in the wrong place, so you can see the profile. See from 25k's out, if Ineos and Jumbo Visma go absolutely 
bananas at 26Ks, drop our Philippe, he's got no one to help him bring back, say Remco and James Knox, this is stage 8, this is stage 18, we're now deep into the third week of the Tour de France, they've never ridden, oh no, James Knox ridden the Grand Tour, they've never ridden the Tour de France, and they've never ridden a race as hard as this, full gas as this, if they, if our Philippe gets dropped here at 25Ks, <laughs> he's going to lose 15 minutes, 10 minutes, so that's the difference between podium or not, um, Whereas, you know, rather than being dropped right at the end, you know, rather than him losing 15 seconds at the end of each mountain top stage when people attack him, because that actually doesn't happen because Philippe has a really, really good kick at the end of stages. So, stage 18, and then stage 19 is a flat stage. Sam Bennett, this is got to, I mean, I love Caleb Ewan. I think Caleb Ewan's the best sprinter in the world, like pure sprinter on the flat, but man... All the sprinters, don't you reckon all the sprinters when they when they saw this Tour de France route reveal, just Christian Prudhomme or whoever released it, they, they saw all the stages and they just went, fuck. <laughs> First six stages and there's like two stages they can even contend for a sprint with. And then like one of the, you know, one of the six sprint stages is after like two hard mountain, mountain top <laughs> mountain stages in stage 19. So will they even bring Dylan Groenewegen? I don't know. In, you know, Yama Visma. I think they should bring Wal Fado if he's uh, in the right. You know, if his leg is right. All right. Okay. So that's that's a bit about the route. No one talking about Michael Matthews. I don't know. I don't know what Michael Matthews would do. Some of these might suit him because he likes a bit of a harder race. He, he can climb pretty well. I do think Pagacci will do well. Lavar Ball predicting any off squad. Uh, Dylan Van Baal, Luke Rowe, Chris Froome, Egan Bernal, Andre Amador, Ivan Sosa, Jonathan Castroviejo, and maybe I met one more, not sure. All right. La Planche de Bear feels steep but early. Why does nobody talk about Thomas? I don't think they're going to bring Thomas. Which sprinter for Bora Hans Grower is... Is Bora, is Pascal Ackerman and Sam Bennett, are they all contracted to, are they all contracted to Bora Hansgrove for next year? I don't really know the contracts too well, but is, are they all fully contracted next year to Bora? Because Sam, I know Sam Bennett was complaining a lot about, um, about, you know, how he's being treated at Bora Hansgrove. <laughs> I think this really suits Sam Bennett. Could this be the year that Peter Sagan... Is this the year where the points jersey is actually more interesting? Because there's straight up... There's zero chance that Clona Vegan, Ackerman or Ewan can win the green points jersey. There's no way they can. So, I don't know. Do you then take Sam Bennett? If he loses maybe like a little bit of weight, he can you know he can climb pretty well. He's actually got a really a good engine. Bennett, no contract. Okay. I think Bennett's gone, just, you know, from what he said. I think Bennett's probably gone. Valverde's doing the Olympics. <sighs> who knows what, who Movistar are going to bring. But for sprinters, I think it really suits Bennett, in my opinion, if he and does lose a bit of weight. Ackerman can't climb enough to... Uh, he Will he even make it to stage 19? Will he even make the cutoff? Cut off? Um, Peter Sagan is in the start list for the Giro d'Italia, according to Juan Sebastian Lundano Munoz in the comments. Um, Elia Viviani. Where's Viviani going? Is he going to Trek Segafredo? Do I think Kreuzfeld could be riding? Sorry, let me... I, I did the Team Ineos team again. Let me do the Jumbo Visma team again, just to, to remind people who I think the Jumbo Visma team... No, sorry. This is who I think the Jumbo Visma team should be, and this is because I'm a crazy person. I think it should be this... Wout van Aert, Primoz Roglic, Stefan Kruiswijk, Robert Hesink, Tom Dumoulin, Tony Martin, George Bennett, Lawrence de Plus, and Jos van Emden. If that's too many people, then cut off one of Jos van Emden or Robert Hesink. Everyone, as usual, though, sleeping on Cannondale, Cannondale for, or Education First as well. So Sergio Aguita, Robert, um, Robert, Rigoberto Uran, Mike Woods, Will... So, you know, will they be able to do well? Danny Martinez kind of suits them as well, like those Colombian guys. We'll see. We'll see in all the streamers. Streamers paused. What's happening with the stream? 
um, you know, what's happening with those guys? I know it's comment, comment if it's lagging for you guys. Said my stream health is pretty good. All right, let's just as a joke, and we we got five more minutes, guys. So just as a little joke, let's have a look at Arkea Samzich's team. Oh no, why is the stream lagging? <laughs> why you do this? Sorry, I'm refreshing it. We're back, we're back, we're back. Relax everyone, relax. Okay, fuck, Look, I didn't pick my nose. Sorry, the internet in Australia is like, so bad guys okay team rk samzich okay so this is how this is how naira quintana is going to win the tour de france relax everyone all right so we've got warren buggy did everyone notice was was i imagining this was i like actually imagining this was warren buggy on the stage for the tour de france route presentation was that actually what happened the guy who's like i know he you know won king of the mountains a few years ago but really like <laughs> the guy that like didn't do anything this year i mean they need firstly okay sam's itch need to remove this graphic if you can see this <laughs> you guys you need to remove this graphic of zero overall oh no this is on the tour de france website sorry sorry it's on the tour de france website let me go back where's that where's their website do they have a website it'll, it'll only be in french Okay, so this is the team they'll actually have around Naira Man. Oh, this internet's so bad. Jesus Christ. Anyway, if you want to see more breakdowns, go, go to Mihai. While this is lo loading, check out Mihai Kazaku on Twitter. Check out La Flamme Rouge on Twitter. He's got some good previews as well. I know I should use Pro Cycling Stats Hunter Grove. I know I should use it, but I'm lazy and it's, it's early in the morning here. But let's see if this is loaded. Unless everything's... Everything's lagging. Wow, my whole computer's fucked. <laughs> Come on, man. We're back, we're back. Alright, so who have they got? Bryce Fellew. <laughs> so maybe Emmanuel Moana, is he retired? I think he's retired. So they got Nairo Quintana, Maxim Boué. Warren Buggy, they got all right support for, for Naira Man. I don't, obviously don't think Naira Man's uh, winning too much, but they got all right support for him. So, okay, last five minutes, guys, few questions. Few. Let, let me go through your last questions. Is Andre Garpel retiring? No, he's leaving. Um, I think he's leaving Arkea to go to another team because he had a really bad, really bad run there. And I agree, Martin Engelal Greipel is starting to look a bit old. Like, he was supposed to be the lead-out man there. Um, he's not looking great. Uh, I don't think Greipel will ever win a Grand Tour Sprint ever again. So, that's just sad reality. So, oh, Arkea got Winner Anacona and Diego Rosa. And they have Diad Quintana as well, I believe. So... Winner Anacona, really strong domestique for Movistar over the last few years, especially in hard mount top finishes. And Diego Rosa has been, he's more of a classics specialist, but, you know, really good pure climbing guy as well. He won, I believe, did he win Milan Torino? He won an Italian classics race in 2015 when he was riding for Astana. Will there be echelons? Where will Sam Bennett go? I think there will be echelons because it's in the it's in the south of France, but it's not right on the coast. So if you watch that Mark Cavendish video I put up last night, there was a, um, you know, it was right on the coast, so there are those crosswinds. But this year it's kind of it's not it's in the south of France, but not right on the coast. It's in the more mountainous region. What is this stream about? Me talking about Tour de France route and what's going to happen in 2020? Not too much really. I should have probably named it. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad at, at YouTube. <laughs> Didn't even name this stream, which I probably should have done. Um, Arca Jean Cycliste Dynamic, who check him out on Instagram, but he said RK has become a de facto nursing home for dying champions. Probably, probably correct. Roglic or Kroosvik for tour from the Kwine. Yes, I think both of them should go because that's what. That's what Ineos do. So, like, if you want to, 
if you want to compete with them, you've got to do what they do, and that's just bring the strongest team possible. Okay, last two minutes. F the chat. Let me know. Comment. Leave your comments now so I can see um, whether you like to stream. Comment any tips for improvements on the stream. Uh, me, the stream lagging is probably not something a bit outside of my control. That's just our Australian internet. I'm trying to refresh it when it's lagging. But yeah, comment what you'd like to see. What I could do differently with it. Is this a good uh, a good time frame? A good sort of time zone for most people. I'll leave the video up afterwards. Matteo Luca, Taylor Finney, Taylor Finney retiring is just sad. I will speak on this just, I know this is about the Tour de France route, but I'll speak on this just quickly. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's kind of sad, like what happened with him in his career. Obviously the crash really affected him. I think he's kind of a bit not in a good headspace at the moment because, um, you know, that crash that happened to him and he seems to be thinking, like, I really I really worry for him. I worry for his, like, financial future because he seems to be like, I'm choosing art. I'm choosing art. And it's like, okay, like, I get that. I get that, Taylor. But, you know, I hope you, I hope you got, like, a... I hope you're just all right, like, financially. I hope you're all set and you actually got a plan to make money and support yourself because from what I've seen on your Instagram, your art, um, they don't pay no rent. No offense, but that's just my opinion.